I'm Roger Duncan. I'm the general manager of Austin Energy, which is the municipal utility for Austin, Texas. Okay, so we've heard a lot this morning about plug-in hybrids and electric vehicles. Yes. Um, how are you all involved with that? Well, we were one of the first uh, in the country a few years ago to start the campaign to get plug-in hybrid electric vehicles manufactured by the automakers. Uh, and we've been very successful at that, obviously, along with a lot of other people. Uh, all the major automakers are bringing out plug-in hybrids over the next couple of years. And today we were actually announcing uh, victory in our campaign, and we're moving on to the next phase of our uh, technology. Well, how long did it take from the time that you started the plug-in partners program to the time that all the automakers essentially announced? It was essentially about two years, two, two and a half years, uh, which is very fast yeah. in the auto industry and, and the way things move in this country. So what happened, do you think? Well, I think that uh, uh, the first, the main thing that happened is gas prices. Uh, the cost between driving on the electric grid and driving on gasoline is huge. Uh, you can fill up your car and drive on the electric grid for the equivalent of 75 cents a gallon gasoline. So the cost became compelling. The environmental issues were compelling because of the climate change legislation that's pending and, and other activities around climate change. And then national security uh, because of reducing our dependence on foreign oil. So suddenly you had the automakers and the electric electric utilities and the national security advocates and the environmentalists all starting to want to move toward plug-in hybrids for different reasons and I think that's what happened. So for, so for the average consumer they can't really participate right now can they? How can they participate in bringing this about? Well, uh, the average consumer really is waiting for the manufacturer of these vehicles, and I think that the activists have done a job of getting the uh, the commitment of the automakers to make the vehicles. Um, so we're really waiting for the advent of these vehicles. You can convert some plug-in hybrids, uh, some conventional hybrids to a plug-in hybrid, but it's, it's really relatively expensive. There isn't a cost payback within a reasonable number of years. Uh, but the main thing is getting ready for the mass manufacturing of these vehicles by the automakers. So you've reached your first goal, and you declare victory. Yes. What's the, the next goal is what? Uh, the next goal is figuring out all the hardware and software to seamlessly connect the electric grid to the transportation sector and set up public charging stations, charging in garages, that sort of thing. Because many people don't have a single family home with a garage that they can plug in a vehicle. So we have to solve that problem too. Those are the kind of th things we're working on. So, so your first goal seemed like it was, it was easy to define. Manufacturers making it. Yes. What's what's victory for the second goal? Uh, the second goal is to have um, a technology in place that lets us control when the charging occurs and then also to establish the public charging infrastructure needed for the average citizen to plug in and charge their vehicle. That seems like a tougher goal, is it? That is a tougher goal um, and it uh, because it's more widespread and involves more elements, but um, it's not insurmountable by any means. We're not, there's no basic science involved here. It's just really a technology deployment issue. Is, is the Austin grid ready for all this electric vehicle plug-in? Well, the Austin grid is getting electric uh, ready for the electric vehicles. Um, actually, there are a number of vehicles could be plugged in now without any impact on our grid or for most electric utilities. But when you get a lot of vehicles plugging in at one time, the electric utility needs to control some things like the charging times of those vehicles. And then ultimately, we want to actually reverse the flow so that we can use the capacity of the batteries in these vehicles for our own peak electric needs. That technology and hardware and software is not really in place yet, but that's what we're testing out uh, today in a uh, beta testing format. Yes, there seems to be two types of engineers, those that believe hydrogen's viable and those that don't. <laughs> As a consumer, I mean, how should, we, how should we view this discussion? What should we take away from it? Well, uh, my personal take on hydrogen, and I'm not an engineer, let me confess, my personal take on hydrogen is it's one of many tools that are out there. The problem with hydrogen is the fueling infrastructure that has to be in place, both for the mobile market and the stationary market. Um, it's a viable energy carrier for certain. I think the time frame for the implementation of hydrogen may be a little longer than most people thought even a few years ago.